Hi, this is Bucky with Transit and Level Clinic, and we're going to do a quick tutorial on how to do a site calibration, also known as a localization, in Spectre Precision Survey Pro. Now, keep in mind that I am using Survey Pro uh, 6.2. This is the most current version available through Spectre Precision's online website, uh, and I am using this in demo mode. Uh, so some of the menus, some of the processes that we take in this tutorial may be just slightly different than those uh, taken in the field. Also keep in mind that this is directed towards uh, customers that have either purchased from us or that may be renting equipment from us. Uh, therefore, we may be um, really pushing this towards uh, that group of people and may have additional settings or additional processes that need to be taken uh, that maybe you may not have to take. Uh, so we are going to go ahead and start Survey Pro. We've started uh, here. We have no job open. We're going to go ahead and create a new job. The new job we're just going to call localization. From here, we have the uh, opportunity to come in and create our job now based on the default settings of our last job. Well, we can go through each setting menu one by one. We're going to go through our settings. Our general settings are all correct that by default. Next, we have no control file. Next. At this point, we're not selecting a coordinate system because we are going to be doing a localization. However, if you were to come in and want to survey in grid, for example, U.S. state plane with the North Carolina grid or a different state, we could go in and select a coordinate system by checking the box and selecting the correct coordinate system. And we will not be entering a first point. The data that we will be taking is from a uh, total, station, uh, total station survey that we've done prior to uh, this job, and we will be importing that data uh, via a text file. So we'll finish this. Now, the one extra step that we do need to take for current customers that may be surveying in grid may have uh, checked uh, an optional message so that things don't come up uh, as pop-ups as often as uh, they should, um, is to go into our main menu. This is our main menu, our three dots with our three lines in the top left-hand corner. Choose File. I'm sorry, choose Job. Settings. And then we'll use our drop down menu here to go into general settings. All right. Now, if we can't find general settings through our drop down, maybe it's too long, you can tab through uh, and find general as well. Again, we're just using our drop down to general. And at the bottom here, it says reset optional messages. Now, obviously, we don't like all the pop ups that come uh, when we first turn Survey Pro on. That's why we check to not see different messages. Uh, uh, prior to this. However, there is one message that we will need to see in order to complete our localization as easy as possible. So we are going to reset optional messages here. We'll hear a beep, which is our approval that this is finished, and we'll accept by hitting our green check. Now the first thing that we want to do is we want to bring in our data. So we want to bring in the points that we're going to be localizing or calibrating to. We could do this and file, import, we're going to be bringing in a text file, just point number, northern, easting, elevation, and description. We will import. And you will see here I have a GPS control text that I've already put into my Survey Pro Jobs folder. I'm going to import it on the points layer. All of my default settings are correct. It is comma delineated, US survey feet, and plane. And my columns are already set up as PNEZD. We'll finish here. And we can see that four points were imported. We can't go back to our job points and we can make sure that all four of the points that we were trying to import did in fact come in and are showing at that point. We can also click on our map view and we can see the points on our map view as well. From here, what we want to do is we want to go in and start our survey. There's two ways to do this. Again, through the main menu and survey, you'll see start survey there. Or you can go into the home screen if it's been personalized and you will have start survey there as well. We will start our survey, choose our rover. In this case, I have four demo rovers. However, you may only have one that says SP80 or SP60 or whatever receiver you have. You'll have your network settings here, uh, as you always do. The North Carolina Geodetic Survey will be the example that we're using here. We'll connect to that. 
and we have our in trip services. We also call these mount points. Now these are going to be very different than the mount points you're probably seeing. These are example mount points put in by Spectre Precision. We'll just go ahead and choose one that's a network type and connect. And here is the optional message that we brought back in those general settings. So if you were to check down here, don't ask me again, this would not prompt. It would default to either ground calibration or mapping plane. However, I like to have the choice based on what type of survey I'm going to do uh, that particular day. For this, we're going to go in and do our ground calibration. You can choose a geoid model. You don't have to. We're going to go ahead and choose geoid 12B just because it's in there and accept. From here now to the next two screens, this is going to allow us to continue our connection. So here we have the opportunity to come in. Uh, we can put in our two meter pole height. We can choose a post processing recording interval if we want to. Uh, we're going to go ahead and turn that off. We're going to hit the next button. Our base point is fine. We'll hit next. And then here's the screen that gives us the ability to go in and occupy our control. Now it's important to know that you're going to need at least two known points <clears throat> to uh, create this GNSS control or this GNSS resection, if you would. Uh, those two points will give you correct rotation. A third point will give you a good horizontal residual and a fourth point will give you good vertical residual. So it's very typical that you'll be using four points you want these four points to be on the extents of your job. So, for example, if it's a square or a rectangle, the four outside points of the square or rectangle. You can use more points uh, and you can turn off and on vertical and horizontal uh, to be used for control on a single point if needed. So we're going to use all four of the points that we imported earlier. We're going to go to Occupy Control. Now, if you know the points, the point numbers, you can go ahead and just type them in. If you don't, your drop down menu will give you the ability to choose from list or choose from map or off the fly create a new point. We're going to use point number one for good horizontal and good vertical location. And we have our default HR set here. We'll start our control point occupy. At this point, we do need to be on the point. We need to be level and we need to be stable. For any type of site calibration, we do recommend that you use a bipod or a prism pole tripod to make sure that the prism pole or the rover rod stays sturdy uh, during this observation. And we recommend as a company that you occupy this point for a minimum of three minutes to five minutes, depending on the management of the survey group. Uh, this may be longer or shorter, uh, depending on their preference. Here we're gonna go ahead and start our control point occupy at point number one. It's going to create a geodetic point for us. And here we see our geodetic coordinates. We see that we are in a fixed position, our residuals for horizontal and vertical. And we see how many shots we've taken in our Occupy. Now here we do have the ability to turn off horizontal or vertical for this control point. We do know that all four of these points are good. Therefore, we will be using them for both horizontal and vertical. Now again, you do want to occupy this for a minimum of three minutes. We are in a tutorial video, so we are going to speed this up by collecting this point before we reach that three minutes by hitting accept. We are then returned back to our calibration screen where it's now telling us we need to occupy one more point to create GNSS control for the resection. So we'll occupy control. We'll choose point number two this time. Again, we're using it horizontal and vertical, and we have already set our pole height. We will start control point occupy. Again, we're going to accept this point relatively quickly due to the tutorial time. We'll accept this. And at this point, we now have the ability to start now. So we can actually go in and we have our rotation for our grid. However, we want a good horizontal and vertical. So we are going to start occupying additional control. So occupy control, point number three, start point occupation. Again, we're going to do this fairly quickly. We're going to accept. All right. And at this point now, we have our box here, which has our first three points. And you'll notice once we get to point number three, we have uh, residual values. So we have a, a, nor, uh, a north arrow, an east arrow, 
uh, error, I'm sorry, and we have some values for that. You'll notice that we have no vertical error that's here yet. We'll see that as we get to our fourth point. So we have three points. We're going to go ahead and add our fourth point. So add fourth point. We're going to go point number four, occupy. We'll give it a good five shots. We'll accept it. Now, you may get this error. It says detected blunders using the GNSS uh, resection calibration. This could mean a, a couple different things. Um, I'll be honest, we haven't got a great definition from Spectre Precision as of yet. Uh, however, uh, this could be things like error being too great for the calibration, etc. Uh, if you feel like you did not occupy long enough or you did not get the results you should have, uh, you can go back, you can add additional control, you can turn off vertical control or horizontal control for a point, uh, etc. Uh, here we are not going to remove any of our uh, blunders, if you would. We're just going to hit no. And you'll notice now we have residuals under our vertical error. Okay, so even though we have blunders detected, we're still going to use this. You'll notice that our error is really high, uh, which could uh, have resulted in those blunders. And we're going to hit finish to complete our calibration. Now, for example, if you guys were on a job site and it wasn't a square, let's say it was just a big odd area, you may want to add additional points to get the extents or the limits of that job uh, far enough out so that you don't lose accuracy outside of that area. Uh, you can continue to add points and continue to follow the same process that we've done to add the first four points. In this case, these are the only four control points that we have, so we're going to go ahead and finish. And it takes us straight to our data collection screen. Uh, obviously, now we have a northing, an easting, and an elevation that are on par with or on the same grid system as our control file uh, that we did with our total station. And we can begin taking points, storing points from this screen. Now, it is my opinion that anytime you've done a site calibration or a localization, that you do exit this screen. You go into stake points, and you can get there in the main menu under stake out, or if you personalize a screen, stake points, and you go in and stake another point on this job. Typically, I like to pick a, a point in the middle of the job. I'll go to that point and just make sure that I'm actually getting uh, where I'm supposed to be and that it is accurate. All right, some surveyors decide they want to stake out multiple points. Uh, and obviously with GPS, redundancy, repetition, that's what we're looking for. That's what gives us the accuracy in our survey. And so that's what uh, uh, they may want to do, and that's perfectly okay. So you do want to check into a point before you get started. Uh, once you are um, happy with your results, uh, you can go back into data collection. And again, you can start storing points uh, from, that, uh, uh, from that point uh, in your process. So if there's any other questions, please feel free to give us a call. Our office number is 919-467-7782. You can reach me personally at sales, S-A-L-E-S, -E at transitandlevel.com. We appreciate you joining us for this tutorial and certainly hope that it helps you in the field to be more productive uh, with the equipment. Thank you and have a good night.